You are tight makes God a shareholder in whatever you do. Tight makes God a shareholder in everything we do. You are tight opens the windows of heaven. When you stand at the window, you see far than when you stand at the door. I shall rebuke the devourer. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Hey, you are asking me what are devourers? In terms of finances. There is no way you can be Christian without tithing. Anyone who is not paying his tithe is not going to heaven. Full stop. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cleanse the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of extortion and self-indulgence. Extortion is the practice of obtaining something, especially money, through force or threats. It is the same thing being done by these pastors. They kill, trip and threaten people into giving them money. They use Malachi 3 and other verses out of context just to obtain money by taking advantage of people's lack of knowledge. Now I urge you, brethren, note those who cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. For those who are such, do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by smooth words and flattering speech, deceive the hearts of the simple. Anyone who teaches doctrine that contradicts the word of our Father causes divisions, and that person should be noted and avoided. A person who tells you lies just to get your money does not serve Yah. And most false teachers are smooth talkers. And if you are not grounded in the word of Yahuwah, you can be easily deceived by the things they preach. So before we can understand what is meant by the windows of heaven and by the devourer from a biblical perspective, let's briefly touch on what is meant by the tithes and offerings mentioned in Malachi 3. And if you have watched our previous videos, you already have a solid understanding of what tithes are. So the tithes in Malachi 3 refer to food such as grain, oil, animals, etc. And the offerings also refer to food in the form of animal sacrifices, sin offerings, burnt offerings, etc. From Malachi 1 verse 6 to verse 14, the priests were offering animals that were blind, lame and sick instead of offering animals without blemish. And some animals that were offered were stolen animals. With this brief understanding, we can now try to understand what is meant by the windows of heaven. We have heard a similar language being used in Genesis. Let's read Genesis 7 verse 11 to 12 and verse 24 and Genesis 8 verse 1 to 2. In the 600th year of Noah's life, the second month, the 17th day of the month, on that day all the fountains of the great deep were broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. And the rain was on the earth forty days and forty nights. And the waters prevailed on the earth one hundred and fifty days. Then God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the animals that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters subsided. The fountains of the deep and the windows of heaven were also stopped and the rain from heaven was restrained. In the context of Genesis 7 and 8, rain was used by the Most High to destroy. But in the context of Malachi 3, rain will be used to bless. So when the windows of heaven were opened, rain poured from heaven. And you know that rain helps crops grow, animals to have fresh water and fresh grass to graze. Indeed, rain was seen as a blessing from the Most High. And even today, most Africans see rain as a blessing by saying, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. This refers to literal rain. It does not refer to money or to material prosperity. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. With the understanding we have now, when we go to Malachi 3 verse 11, we have a good idea of what is happening. And we know that the following teachers have twisted the meaning of Malachi 3 verse 10. And they are lying. He didn't say the, the doors of heaven or the gates of heaven, he said windows. When you stand at the window, you see far than when you stand at the door. Because God says, I will open over you the heavens. There will not be room enough to receive my blessings on your life. Only the tithe brings the blessings of heaven on people's lives financially. Come, tithe. Go home. Don't pray. Yeah. Says, if you do this, I open. 
Then some of you say, I don't care about open the windows of him. They knew down and said, Father, open the windows. They even sing the song, open the floodgates of... No, shut up, don't sing. Tithe. You are tithe opens the windows of heaven. Tithe. And I'll open the windows of heaven. What do you do with the window? You peep through. So you can see opportunities. Windows here stands for inside. It gives you advanced knowledge. Revelation. You see beyond where you are. And God said, I will give you advanced knowledge if you are tighter. It's not the tithe that will bring you money. It's your eyes after you tithe. Jeez. Hey, come on now. You begin to locate opportunities. Oh, yes. You begin to see opportunities. Oh, yes. All these are lies. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. Nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. So this verse was Yah's promise to the Israelites that he will prevent this thing called the devourer from destroying their crops. He also promises that their vine will bear fruit. Verse 11 of Malachi is very similar to one of the curses for disobedience in Deuteronomy 28 verse 38 to 34 which reads, You shall carry much seed out to the field, but gather little in, for the locust shall consume it. You shall plant vineyards and tend them, but you shall neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worms shall eat them. And verse 42 of the same chapter says, Locusts shall consume all your trees and the produce of your land. In Amos 4 verse 9 we also read of a devourer. I blasted you with blight and mildew. When your gardens increased, your vineyards, your fig trees, and your oil trees, the locusts devoured them. Yet you have not returned to me, says the Lord. And in the context of Malachi, which we have highlighted so far, we can safely say that the devourer is the locust that eats crops. With the revealed understanding of Malachi 3 verse 10 to 11, we can summarize these verses as meaning, if they offer animals without blemish and bring the tithes of animals and agricultural harvest as they were commanded to, they will receive rain that will benefit their farming and no pests will eat their crops. Verse 12 even says, and all the nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delight land, says the Lord of hosts. There is no mention of finances in these verses. So all these... That brings God's judgment on the enemy of our prosperity. That brings judgment to the enemy of your prosperity. You see, for your sake, I shall rebuke the devourer. The devourer is the enemy of prosperity. And he has two tasks, to stop you from receiving, and that if you still manage to have to steal what you have, God say, he will bring judgment. I will rebuke him. He will bring judgment on the enemy of your prosperity. If you pay it tight. If you don't pay it to God, they devour us. Hey, you are asking me what are devourers? Eaters of finances. They will destroy the work of your hands. There are people that have worked for years, but they have nothing to show because they are not tithers. There are children, innocent children that died six feet under because of the obedience of daddy and mommy to pay only 100 rand to God. Not that God killed them, but the devourer began to operate. If you want to know more, get the book, The Devourer. It is the tithe alone that gives God authorization to rebuke the devourer. So the devourer reacts when it comes to the tithe. Because God said, if you bring your tithe, I the Lord, he said, prove me. That is the only time in the Bible God says, you can prove me. Put me to a test. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Anyone who is not paying his tithe is not going to heaven. Full stop. All these are lies. They are lies aimed at getting your money. They line up their lies by saying, Tithes and offerings are money. God will bless you with more money and opportunities when you tithe. Bring the tithe to the storehouse, which is their church's altar or bank account. And just to make sure that you give, they tell you that the devourer will destroy the money you already have if you don't give. So give now. And just to make sure that you give them money every Sunday, they tell you the biggest lie of them all. They tell you that you will go to hell if you don't give them your money. After all that, we see the same pastors becoming millionaires and billionaires from the money that you give them. 
To know how believers should give, please watch this video. Prosperity preachers have even made people to believe that blessings only come in the form of money. But that is not true. Tithing was never meant to be an investment scheme. And when some people see good things happening after they tithe, they immediately think blessings only come from our Father. Forgetting that the enemy is also in the blessing business. The enemy blesses people with things that are meant to push people away from Yahoo. If this video has blessed you, please like and share it. And please read your Bibles and pray for understanding. This is not a gossip channel. This channel's aim is to encourage you to follow Yahoo and we should be reading the whole Bible and we should be focused on building a relationship with our Father. Praise Yah. Hallelujah.